Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and today I took the time to go on the PTR or World of Warcraft patch 7.1.5 and test out some of the buffs happened to subtlety. A lot of abilities got buffed. So let's cover all the abilities that got buffed. First of all, Gloomblade, which is a talent on the very first row for Subtlety Rogues. The Gloomblade buff is supposed to make Gloomblade as close to Shadow Strike damage as possible, so it might be an alternative. And one of the things is it goes through armor, so my thoughts are... For PvP, that sounds awesome. That's almost like fine weakness for an ability to go through armor. So we're going to be testing that out today. We are going to be testing out the damage increase to Gormo's Bite, where his damage was doubled and should be doubled for PvP. But we'll see how all the Blizzard changes and knickknacks and how all that functions and just how much damage it deals. Then we're going to be taking a look at the hidden buff that Blizzard decided not to put on Wowhead on Emerald Champion or in any of the nodes that could be mine from the beta is the Nightblade buff. So what they did to Nightblade is the Nightblade slow effect is a magical, but the actual damage effect is a physical. So no longer can you dispel Nightblade. You can still dispel the slow, but once you get a Nightblade on the enemy, that's it. Enemy is just going to take magical shadow damage after you get it on. So there's no way for a healer to just dispel it. So those are some of the awesome buffs happening into subtlety in 7.1.5. Now, this isn't all the buffs that we wanted, but these are the buffs that we got, so we'll take the buffs that we did get. Let's take a look at them closely and see what we are trying to accomplish. Now, when we are talking a little bit about Gloomblade, for example, we got to compare it with Shadow Strike. Shadow Strike is currently the bread and butter and probably like the only, the most useful ability, the only ability that literally keeps subtlety afloat because our finishers no longer deal as much damage as they did, let's say back in Warlords of General or back in Pandaria. So. Shadow Strike is how most subtlety rogues are dealing damage currently. Can Gloomblade replace it? One of the advantages of Shadow Strike is its mobility effectiveness, as well as its collaboration, how it can function together with, with some of the other talents in the very first row, besides Gloomblade. We have Weapon Master, which has a chance to uh, hit twice for any of our abilities used. So Shadow Strike is one of those abilities that can hit literally twice. Or we can simply increase all our damage while in stealth by 10%. We also got to take a look at the artifact weapon to see how it can function with Gloomblade. And if Gloomblade can outweigh all the benefits it brings in with Shadow Strike. Then I just want to talk a little bit about the Gormor's Bite to just tell you if it's enough damage increase for Subtlety to be doing anything amazing. And we also are going to be taking a look at some of the arena clips that I have for you guys from the PTR. I feel like Subtlety Rogues currently are doing not half bad or not that much worse than they currently are, if anything just slightly better, at least for 2v2 skirms. But anyway, let's get onto some of the footages and let's take a look and break everything down bit by bit. Question: Can Dalaran do better than a gladiator rogue in the skirm arena on PTR? We'll see. Let's see if Dalaran knows anything more than a gladiator rogue in the same arena. So first thing we're going to be testing is Gloomblade and there are benefits to it and there are disadvantages. Gloomblade has potential, in my opinion, to bring in a whole new change to our talents and how we play. It's a question of testing his damage to see if it's competi uh, competitive that to a Shadow Strike and see if its effectiveness overall is just as good. So, with the damage that it brings in with Gloomblade, it breaks it's supposed to deal as much damage as a Shadow Strike, more or less, maybe slightly more damage, as long as Shadow Strike doesn't have any crazy buffs. So on the PTR, that's currently what I'm taking a look at right now. And it's all about finding if Shadow Strike can be replaced by Gloomblade, then most of the damage that we're dealing as Subtlety Rogues will come from our Gloomblades. That'll give us some options in terms of choosing different talents. Maybe we can go for some crazy build where we build common points using Gloomblade, but during our Shadow Dances, we are using finishers. So we'll use Shadow Dance, Nightblade, or Shadow Dance, Eviscerate for a heavy hit, and then we have Gloomblade, where we don't need to have Shadow Dance and Shadow Strike all, all the time, an uptime for both of those to be consistent in order to be able to deal damage. So that's basically what we're trying to accomplish when we are comparing these to see if Gloomblade is worth taking. Now, what you want to pay attention is not only the screen that you're looking at, but also the damage numbers at the bottom right. Right now, I'm rolling for a Gloomblade build with Night Stalker in order to see if I can deal a little bit more damage in terms of my finishers and since I won't really need to have shadow strikes available at all times I'm not rolling subterfuge for an extended duration of my shadow dance so basically what I'm trying to do is open on a target build up common points hit shadow uh, shadow dance 
and use a finisher and then go back to stabbing the shit out of my enemy with a gloom blade to see if I can build up enough combo points. So then once I'm full of combo points, use a shadow dance back up, use an eviscerate and then go back to stabbing the shit out of my enemy. For the most part, you do have some damage increase with gloom blade, but is it consistent? Kind of depends on the situation. When you're going against a mage, the mobility is definitely a plus. So one of the things you are losing with Gloomblade is the mobility. And also, most of the value of your Shadow Strike ends up being a little bit different than out of Gloomblade. You see a Shadow Strike, if it crits, can deal massive damage. Gloomblade, if it crits, deals somewhat okay damage. So with Gloomblade, you get a little bit more consistency and less of like this burst capability. Before I go on reviewing Gloomblade and comparing it against Shadow Strike, I want to talk a little bit about the nerf to Rogue's slows. So all the abilities that slow for Rogue's, which are Nightblade, Crimple Poison, and Pistol Shot slow, are now 30% effective. So they'll slow the enemy by 30% rather than 50. Not sure exactly why Blizzard did this, because there are moments where, even as a subtlety Rogue, I am chasing after a Shaman, his slow keeps me slower than him. So he just applies a slow on me, I apply a slow on him, and the guy can still waddle away from me. So in my test when I'm trying to test Gloomblade, in most cases, I end up having to resort to Shadow Strikes. And then I'm having to Shadow Strike again. And then the enemy gets waddles away, I have to Shadow Strike again. So then at the point it just becomes like, oh yeah, fuck it, I'm just not going to use Gloomblade, I'm going to use Shadow Strike. And that's kind of, if that's how the game is going to be, and that's going to be our nerf to slow, that's basically will take Gloomblade as far away as possible from being good. Because it's a cool ability, it deals decent damage. I actually am surprised that it deals damage equal to that of a Shadow Strike. I just feel it's going to be PvE change. And this uh, uh, talent is going to be more PvE used. Mainly because now that uh, Subtlety doesn't need to have damage coming from your Shadow Strikes, maybe then they can change up a bit in terms of talents and builds and what they want to do. But this is actually a really good example right here, this clip. Me versus a Shaman. And you'll notice, I'll tell you when to notice it. Uh, where my slows versus his slows literally allow him to waddle away from me. And here I'm trying to use Shadow, uh, I'm trying to use Gloomblade as much as possible. And I'm actually kind of happy with the damage that it deals. Again, I wasn't expecting some crazy burst damage, but I was expecting Shadow Strike damage, and that's basically what I got. So Gloomblade is able to do that, and it goes through armor. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be even more effective against plates, and in some cases, tanks when you're running random battlegrounds. But here's the part where the slows are really just starting to meet one another. My slow versus his slow. And this is where I'm just having to resort to shadow strikes and having to burn through shadow steps where the guy can literally just like, just a tornado away from me. So it becomes a little bit obnoxious and annoying to deal with. So if the slows are going to come out to live as of 7.1.5, then Gloomblade is going to have less efficiency. So then we're going to be leaning towards shadow strike. Some of the other things I want to talk about Shadow Strike is I feel that it has way too many talents right now that function well with it. So while Gloomblade is an awesome idea, it's just there's so many utilities that Shadow Strike comes in with. First of all, talk about talents. Talents. I feel like Master Subtlety and Weapon Master, while not directly acting with Shadow Strike, they do indirectly affect it. Master Subtlety gives you 10% damage increase while in Stealth, and that's also functions for Shadow Dance. What do you do while you're shadow dancing? You're spamming shadow strikes. So shadow strikes effectively have 10% more DPS increase. Then we have Weapon Master, which has a chance to double up a damage. But not only does it double up, it has double up effects as well. Shadow Strike Artifact Trait, I'm not really sure what's it called, but there's a Shadow Strike Artifact Trait, or actually Cheap Shot and Shadow Strike, where on Cheap Shots and Shadow Strikes, you have a chance to generate random energy. I think 15 energy give back. So if you Shadow Strike and you gain energy, and then Weapon Master procs off of the Shadow Strike that generate energy, it'll double the energy regeneration. So Weapon Master inadvertently ends up working really well with Shadow Strike, maybe a little too well. We have talents like Strike from Shadows, which directly ties to Shadow Strike, where Shadow Strike has a caked in slow, which is actually pretty interesting. It has a daze, so maybe that's what rogues will be using from now on in order to slow everybody else, because our current slows are just not that great. Then we have Premeditation, which gives Shadow Strike an extra combo point that it generates. Like, so much value out of one ability. We have Vigor, which allows us more Shadow Strikes, not directly affects it, but inadvertently affects it. Then we have Master Shadows, more energy, more Shadow Strikes. Also works well with Shadow Dance, so inadvertently affects it. Then we have Artifact Traits. Akari Soul, Shadow Nova. Like, those two traits make Subtlety and Shadow Strike that much better. And that's just simply damage increase. 
So Akari Soul is going to be a big component of your burst, especially of your regular damage, because of the faster uh, rate at which Akari Soul attacks for 2 second delay instead of 4. And then Shadow Nova is going to be usable every 5 seconds, I think, once every, five, once every 5 seconds with a Shadow Strike. So then you'll be able to deal more Shadow damage. Of course, it'll be AoE, but it won't break CC, at least that's what I heard. It does not break CC, so that'll be good for PvP. Then I feel like Shadow Strike on its own as an ability was just made way too good by Blizzard. And not only is it a mobility ability that teleports you to the enemy, it ports you behind the enemy, allowing some of the most skilled uh, subtlety rogues to be able to win duels in one-on-one -on -one situations and move around the battlefield using the enemy's position. Imagine a Glacial Spike being completely loaded up and cast on you, right before it goes off your Shadow Strike behind the enemy. They can't see you, that's not in line of sight. The, 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 the big lance disappears. So, I feel like Blizzard made Shadow Strike way too good. I like this change to Gloom Blade. It does add a damage component increase to it. I just feel that they made Shadow Strike way too good. I feel like Subtlety should be renamed to Shadow Strike because that's basically where most of your damage comes from is Shadow Strikes. It's just way too good of an ability in my opinion. And I'm not saying that it should get nerfed, but it's just like it's a whole spec based around this ability. It used to be a spec based around Shadow Dances, but now it's really all about Shadow Strikes. So, it's just interesting and funny how things turn out as they do, you know? So, I, those are some of my thoughts on uh, Gloomblade. It's just, it's an interesting ability and I like the buffs that it got. I just feel like they're gonna be PvE specific buffs. Where they'll be able to help you out in terms of raid and dungeon environments. And maybe give you some different options in terms of damage. But I don't think there'll be any use, or as much of use as they, I want them to, as I want Gloomblade to, in PvP. So I'm a little bit saddened by that myself personally because I was really, really, really hopeful that Gloomblade was going to be something cool and be some game changer, but I highly doubt it, at least for the PvP component of the game. Although I am very, very excited for the PvE part because uh, that might be very, very exciting. Now, I want to talk a bit about some of the other buffs. Uh, Garmo's Bite, I want to cover that quickly. It's a double of the damage increase. It's not like an insane, bam, half your health is gone. But it's much more helpful when you're bursting on the enemy, so it gives you a little bit extra DPS in order to line up an actual burst in the opener. Great for 2s and 3s, so play with a bursted class like a Mage or a Hunter, or even a Warlock. So that's always nice. Then we got a buff of Nightblade. Nightblade, is, the actual shadow damage of it, is no longer dispellable. So that is awesome, especially for rogues that are playing with a healer right now. So if you're currently playing with a healer, this means that any other healer playing against you is not going to be able to dispel the damage. So that means the subtlety in 2s and in 3s is going to be able to get full effect of the damage. So the healers are going to have to heal through it rather than dispel. A dispel to dispel a powerful dot uh, can be more mana efficient than having to heal through it. So this will force enemies to put more resources into dealing with you as a subtlety rogue. Plus not having them dispelled will allow you more damage in general. I feel like that's a really good change. Uh, that's really about it. I think this is everything that I have, and I feel like subtlety is turning out to be a very solid spec for 7.1.5. It is one spec that's very loosely, very, very loosely affected by the slow nerve that is happening in the game, which I'm, first of all, not excited for. I'm trying to find my ways around it as an alpha rogue, but it's a spec that's going to be very, very competent and greater and even better for twos and threes and even battlegrounds. So if you're looking for a safe spec to play in the next patch, I think you guys should definitely check out Subtlety and invest some artifact points into it if you have any to spare. Although I am going to continue playing Outlaw in the future as my main spec, I will still dabble with a bit of Subtlety and Assassination on the side just for fun of these. Because those seem to be fun specs in general and they seem to be viable so far. Anyway guys, this is everything for Subtlety update from the last build. Thanks so much for watching, let me know what you think about everything in the comments below and I'll see all of you in the next video.